And on Reaper. Do you know what this is about, John? Uh, no. <laughs> uh, it's a 10 minute tip. It's understanding back pain, localized, positional, ridiculous with John. Oh. <laughs> All right. So I'll introduce. Hold on. Um, I just need to rename this. John can just cut this out. I'm going to close the door and hopefully nobody's here. Whoa. Whoa, what? Something just shocked me. We're okay. Wow. Right. Oh. Oh, God. I'm not going to close the door, I guess. Maybe it was like walking across the rug. It was the carpet, yeah. It, but it was like in my it. ear from the yeah. headphones. Yeah. I always, wow. I always shock JD. It's terrible. Goodness. I gave him a kiss the other day on his cheek, and it was so painful. I felt so bad. It's dry. All right. 10-minute tip. All right. I'm not, I'm not going to move. Oh. oh, I don't have – Alyssa, can you do it on your phone? Because I don't have my uh... – The timer? Yeah, I don't know. Oh, I, have, I, was like, I have a timer. I have a timer ready to go. He's setting it for less than 10 minutes. <laughs> no, 10 minutes. Let's go. <laughs> You're going to have to hit start. Okay, wait. Don't hit it yet. All right. Welcome back to the Progressive Rehab and Oh, he's hitting it. You're we didn't even start yet. That's the intro. It counts. No, it doesn't. Welcome Let's back go. to the <laughs> Welcome back to the Progressive Rehab and Strength Podcast. I'm your co-host, Dr. Rory Alter, head clinical coach here at Progressive Rehab and Strength with my lovely co-host, Dr. Alyssa Havison, and uh, another PRS clinical coach here at Progressive Rehab and Strength, Dr. John Patrizzo, professor at Adelphi University in kine- uh, exercise science, teaches kinesiology, biomechanics, sports medicine, all those good things. Um, and we're back today with a 10-minute tip. We're going to be talking about, as a follow-up to our kinesiology and functional anatomy lecture on the back. We're going to be talking about different types of back pain. Um, so back pain always is not is not always in your back and you can have symptoms elsewhere and not in your back and it can be coming from your back. So John, can you talk to us about kind of like the three types of back pain that we see, which is localized back pain, positional back pain, and radicular back pain? Um, and kind of what we should do about like very quickly obviously like this is a 10 minute tip what we should do about them and which ones we should be most concerned about um well just to start off i think in terms of if we're talking about which ones to be most concerned about i would say ridiculous right mm-hmm. because that's radiating that that by definition means that the pain is radiating from your back to another part of the body right so it's a mm-hmm. uh, it's going to involve um, the nervous system, right? The the peripheral nerves, and uh, could have variety of causes, like a bulging or herniated disc, or it could be, you know, advancing spinal stenosis, uh, you know, something like that. That uh, anything that compresses the peripheral nerve through its course, you know, uh, to whatever, if it's in the upper extremity or lower extremity. Um, so, so to me, radicular symptoms are more concerning than localized back pain, right? Localized back pain can happen for a variety of reasons, but typically, um, we would be less concerned about that. Can you describe to us what ridiculous, like what does ridiculous symptom feel like? Or like what do, how do people describe ridiculous symptoms? Because I think, you know, there's multiple different sensations that you can feel. Mm -hmm. Um, So what are people looking for if they are experiencing ridiculous symptoms? Most commonly they talk about numbness, tingling, uh, sometimes burning sensations, you know, those I would say are the three most common uh, that I that I hear about from people. Um, I would say also like a dull ache down like throughout the whole region of that nerve distribution. Yeah, yeah, that that could certainly uh, be the case as well. Um, And then, you know, so those are, are what we would call sensory symptoms, right? Um, more significant than sensory symptoms would be um, weakness, right? Neurologic weakness. So that would mean that the portion of the nerve that actually innervates the muscle tissue and sends a signal to contract is being compromised. Uh, And that's certainly a more serious situation uh, when you have neurologic weakness going on because uh, nerve tissue, um, once it's damaged, it takes a long time to heal. 
uh, if it if it's able to heal at all. So if that nerve continues to be compressed for a prolonged period of time, there is the chance that it never regains uh, its function, and you could have permanent um, muscle weakness. So so a I'll lot of times my, I'll use my mom as an example. She had carpal tunnel syndrome for a very very long time. She didn't do anything about it. She didn't do anything about the weakness. She never mentioned it to me. And she did have the carpal tunnel release. She has the pain, pain relief, but the um, muscular deformity in her hand and the function of her hand never really came back. So just, yeah. just as an example. <laughs> right. So so when people start to experience weakness, then it, it becomes even more serious. And a lot of times those become surgical candidates, you know, mm -hmm. fairly quickly. I have had a few people that I've worked with that have had weakness that opted not to have surgery and recovered and got better, which was really uh, incredible. But you're, you are rolling the dice a little bit with that scenario, because if you don't get better, then, you know, there's a chance that, uh, that that could be a permanent situation. Yeah. So talk to us about, so if you're feeling tingling, burning, shooting pain, you know, when you start to have these ridiculous symptoms that aren't going away in a couple of days, um, I, or they're getting worse over time, I would just, you know, either seek out a physical therapist, chiropractor, or spinal specialist to get your, to get your symptoms looked at. If you're having muscle weakness, so if you can't walk on your toes or your foot is like slapping the ground or you're having difficulty with your grip, um, you, you're dropping things, you can't open things that you used to open, um, or, you know, you're, you're, like you can't bet like all of a sudden your bench press goes from like 225 to the 45 pound barbell is too hard to walk out. Um, let's go see someone. Now we can also have positional pain. So positional symptoms. So can you talk a little bit about what that is and what that means and what we, what should, what we should do about it? Uh, sure. So some people, um, you know, their back pain is, is more specific and related to, um, certain movement patterns, right? So like there are some people that their symptoms are provoked by, provoked by spinal flexion, let's say, um, or some people that are provoked with the opposite, like spinal extension is really irritating for them. A lot of times those people, uh, we would say they have uh, what we would call a directional preference and movement in the opposite direction tends to give them relief, right? So if someone that's very flexion intolerant, kind of the first thing that we would do would be to get them on like an extension protocol. And that's kind of like the McKenzie approach, right, to treatment. Um, whereas like maybe somebody with really advanced spinal stenosis, they find extension to be irritating, then, you know, flexion is much more comfortable mm -hmm. for them. Mm -hmm. Now, that that's how you would start their treatment. But over time, you would like to gradually expose them to those positions that were previously irritating so that they kind of build up a tolerance to them. Um, but uh, that's certainly a, a longer process. Yeah. So if you are experiencing back pain and for instance, like maybe you can sit at your desk for like 20 minutes and then after that 20 minute mark, you start to get your symptoms. Then we would say, okay, let's, let's consider just for until we can get these symptoms under control. Let's talk about like getting up every 20 minutes and walking around the office for 10 minutes or, or going to a a bookcase and putting your laptop on the bookcase and working there, you know, if you obviously don't have like a sit to stand desk, but prolonged position, like kind of find what your limit is. And if you're at the 20 minute mark, that's when your symptoms start to, to get irritated. You got to do something about it. So get out of that position. So oftentimes changing the position can help us decrease the amount of irritation we're causing to the back. And over time, if we change our position enough, we can start to get a lessening of our symptoms and we can start to sit longer. So relieving those symptoms or relieving the irritation over time. And the same thing with, you know, some, if you're uh, extension, so if standing is really bothering you, then maybe, um, you know, working, uh, when you're sitting or, um, you know, if you're in like the supermarket and, and walking around is bothering you, lean your arms on like the, the grocery cart or something like that so that you can still function, but you don't have to stand up all the way. Um, so definitely if you're experiencing any positional symptoms, just change your position before your symptoms get start to come on, like note that time that it's happening. And this can definitely help speed along the recovery process. 
Um, and let's talk about localized back pain because you've never done a 10 minute tip and you're, we got to keep you moving here because <laughs> we got to direct you. So what is, what is uh, uh, localized back pain and what can we do about it? Well, localized back pain is is really, uh, I would say, the most common out of out of all of these, right? And it can be a variety of factors. We were talking about on the podcast how, you know, we have all of these different structures in the spine, and really, it's not important to to pinpoint which one it is. It's important to treat the symptoms, right? And um, <clears throat> excuse me, the the good thing about localized back pain is that uh, it tends to resolve itself relatively quickly. So even an acute onset of pain, like a back tweak from, you know, bending down to pick up your kid or, you know, from lifting or whatever, uh, tends to resolve itself, you know, uh, on its own within a couple of weeks. So it's not anything to panic over, uh, even if it's very debilitating for a short period of time. Yeah. And, and what I would say, you know, tying this all back to lifting is if you've got these symptoms going on, that doesn't mean that you can't lift. Uh, what we would recommend for people who are experiencing most of these symptoms, but not those the, the really bad, you know, like let's see a doctor now kind of symptoms is that we would recommend wearing your belt even for warm up sets. Um, and we'll have an episode talking about um, the Valsalva maneuver. And yes, thank you. We know five seconds left. The Valsalva maneuver. I love his background. It's little JD. Um, we will have an episode coming out this month on the Valsalva maneuver and, um, how belts are good for your, how to use a belt to protect your back. Um, and, uh, so use your belt on your warm up sets and your work sets, find loads that don't irritate you, find ranges of motions that don't irritate you. If that means benching with your feet on the bench, if it means doing box squats higher than depth, if it means doing rack pulls or only dead, uh, only RDLs or halting deadlifts, find a movement that does not increase your symptoms at baseline, wear your belt and keep training. Again, we have a whole series on pain and injuries and barbell training part one, two, and three. So go listen to those. If you need any help with any of your symptoms, your back pain in barbell training, you can book a free consultation call with any of the three of us here at PRS. There's a link in the show notes and you can join us in the Secret Society of Barbell Mastery to get a form check or ask us questions. Join us on a live Q&A session for the podcast, et cetera. We would love to have you. That's it for now. John, thank you so much for taking the extra 10 minutes to do this 10-minute tip, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye for now.